Yo guys, what up? Nick Broman here. Today I'm giving you another Ruby discussion video. And this time, that is based on the five things I believe need to happen within Ruby Volume 5. And a quick little update to all of this. Um, throughout Ruby's uh, current volumes, that is volumes 1, 2, 3, and 4, Ruby Volume 1 had, um, I believe, 16 episodes, while Ruby Volumes 2, 3, and 4 had 12 each. And now, just announced on Rooster Teeth's Twitter, um, there will be 14 episodes this season, which is two extra than we've been getting for the past three seasons. So that's pretty freaking cool and awesome. Now let's get into the video. Now, these are the five things that need to happen because they either they weren't properly addressed in Volume 4 or they were just poorly executed and also things that I think will kind of happen in Volume 4, I mean Volume 5. So the first thing that is, that will happen or needs to happen is Yang's um, PTSD more delved on. The only thing we really saw from her was the fact that she had a couple little flashing lights and flashing images of Adam's mask, a bad dream of uh, of her having her arms, not having her arm, and her just, you know, kind of just a big mental image of her not being herself, which, if I'm being honest, that's not really enough. I mean, PTSD does a lot to someone, and we barely got to see any of it. And Yang has to face a brutal truth that she honestly can't, like, punch her way through everything like she would usually do. And that's just something we didn't really get to see much of in Volume 4. So I, I think we need to see that delved in more in Volume 5. And I hope, and hopefully that will come to pass. Because, from being honest, if it isn't, Volume 5 is the prime opportunity to do this. And if they don't do it, I will be very disappointed from an analytical point of view. The next thing we need to see in Volume 5 is Adam Torres. Because if we're being honest with each other here, Adam is probably the best villain so far. And you can see me sucking his dick in my own video, which I will, will, which I will leave a link to in the description of my description of why Adam is probably the best villain so far and Ruby. However, um, and, this, and this is a very different um, kind of thing with Adam. We need to see him face off again. The only time we really saw him fight was in Blake's um, character short from the very beginning of the show. We didn't really see him fight any, like any, like anything else. Like, sh I guess you can consider um, him stabbing Blake and cutting his ar arm off a fight. But if it is, it was a very poor fight. It was more to sort of bring up a new uh, scenario of troubles for the characters rather than an actual fight. So I mean, we don't really know much about Adam and I think seeing as Blake's character short for volume 5 was very much focused around Ilya and the, different, and the difference in views of the White Fang, we need to have more of Adam and more of the White Fang being displayed and we need to see what, what exactly Adam is capable of because you could argue the point that well, in the in the black character short with Blake and Adam, they only fought robots, and that's not really a challenge. But you know, we just haven't seen much of Adam, and we haven't got to dive into his character as much. And I think this would be a good opportunity to do that in this volume, be because it's been hyped up so much. So I think this is the prime opportunity to finally get into Adam's character and finally display his reasoning and just overall finding some sort of mentality within Adam because right now from what's being displayed and what we're being shown we only just know him as an evil dude we can only really theorize on what's going on with him so Adam Torres needs to be discussed in this video and it will be also it will also be good to uh see him have an actual fight it doesn't have to be the final fight with him and Blake and all of them but we, we, we need to see him fight with actual huntsmen and huntresses um like an actual fight 
So Adam needs to be delved into more, as well as the White Fang. And we also need to see what Adam is really capable of. The next thing that needs to be discussed or brought up is Raven. And I'm going to loop all these things in together and not really get into very specifics right now because that's a video for another time. But we need to get into Raven, Team Stark, and Summer's death. From the beginning, we knew Summer had died. But why did she die? How did she die? And what was the meaning behind her death? As well as Team Stark itself. They seem like a unique pairing. And if we're being honest, we don't know much other than Team Stark is Summer, Ty, uh, Raven, and Crow. That's all we know. We don't know the background, the history on that. And considering we got a big dump in Volume 5, un in Volume 4, with Raven, you know, giving out little hints and Crow's semblance, I think they're airing this uh, next volume up to give us answers into Summer, Stark, and Raven's character. As well as maybe uh, Ty and Crow's kind of mentality on Raven and Summer and Team Stark overall, kind of characterizing them a bit more. They're in a perfect position to where they can delve into this backstory crap that has to be explained. This is again a prime opportunity for that to happen. And I think this volume is the perfect chance for them to do it. So Team Stark's history, the meaning behind uh, Summer's death, why it happened, how it happened, as well as going into Raven's character, which I'm looping all in one. So that needs to be delved into, all those things. Next thing I think needs to be displayed in Ruby Volume 5 is more world building, and this time around the Kingdom of Mistral. For the most part, the only place we really got to see was Vale. I mean, you could count the adventures with Team Rager as exploring the world, but we didn't really get much of it as much as we got Vale. And you could explain that, well, we got Menagerie and, the, and Atlas. However, here's the thing. Menagerie, we didn't explore. The, and in Atlas, we only got the, um, the Weiss, the, the, the Schnee Manor. So we didn't really explore. Whereas in Volumes 1, 2, and 3, we saw many different parts of Vale and saw how Vale operated. Whereas you look at, whereas you look at um, the Volume 4 with Menagerie and the Schnee Manor, we didn't get to see much. So, and Volume 4 was much, was kind of like a hype up and a calm down to Volume 3. And I, it was a calm, it was a calm down from Volume 3 and it was a hype up to Volume 5. And it was also like displaying the world and the troubles the world has to offer. It was world building. And it will be good to get more world building for Mistral. We, for the most part, we haven't seen any kingdom aside from Vale. Now that we're heading to a new kingdom, Mistral, and in the world of uh, Remnant, when it discussed Mistral, Mistral is a very interesting place, home to the world's biggest black mar market. Its culture was very interesting from like the landscape and the earth and the sea and all that. It's just a very cultured place and a very, very interesting place that I think needs to be um, sort of explored upon. And I think it would be very cool to see that to build the world up because Ruby has done that. They have, they've always been very informative about the world, which so many shows don't do. And this is a very good chance to see how another kingdom, the Kingdom of Mistral, operates and behaves and whatnot. Finally, the last thing is, and this is very unspecific because I honestly don't know where they're going to go in, term, in terms of the story. However, this needs to happen too. Volumes 1 and 2 were very much sort of displaying the characters and displaying the villains. However, Volume 3 is where the plot kind of kicked in and showed the real schemes at work. And I think after the, the hype and the adrenaline, the adrenaline rush that Volume 3 had on us, we need something that lives up to it. So with that being said, we also need a death in Volume 5. Now, I'm going to go into this in another video, but I think that it may not be this volume, but I think Gira may die sometime soon. If you don't remember who Gira is, 
That is Blake's father. And hear me out here. I don't know who's going to die. Because I don't know the plot. I don't know what's going to happen for Volume 5. But I do believe someone will, in fact, die. And it just needs to live up. It just needs to get back to having stakes. So at the end of the day, the thing that needs to happen, or should happen, is a death. And guys, that is the five things that I think needs to happen in Ruby Volume 5. Like I said with the whole death thing, I can't really say who. Because we just don't know. We don't know the plot. We don't know what all will be happening. And it's just very much a mystery at this point. But if you guys agree with me, write it in the comments. And if you disagree with me, put it in the comments. Uh, if you guys like this video, rate it 1 through 10. Like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that fun crap. Follow me on my social media. Uh, all the links will be in the description down below. And as always, you guys, Nick Broin, out with a yay.